Hello, this is a virtual microscopy specimen of a fistula in anal, and here we are looking at the perianal skin with the epidermis here, which is composed of stratified squamous epithelium that has surface keratinization. So this is keratinizing stratified squamous epithelium. And there are also some adnexal glands in the underlying soft tissue. We can see some adipose tissue here. And on the deeper aspect, there is skeletal muscle. So this is the actual area of the fistula tract. And we can see that there is some preserved epithelium lining the tract, which is stratified squamous epithelium. But as we go deeper, this is actually now lined by inflamed granulation tissue. So these are all the small, newly formed blood vessels. In the granulation tissue, we have lots of edema around them and mixed inflammatory infiltrates which we can see better on higher magnification. So there are some plasma cells with the eccentric nuclei. We have a binucleated one here. There are also neutrophils, which are part of acute inflammation, and also lymphocytes, as you can see here and here. So moving deeper into the tract, again, we continue to see small blood vessels and lots of inflammation. And as we go still deeper, there is an area here where there is more heavy acute inflammation. Sometimes there can also be abscess formation and also sometimes the abscess precedes the formation of the fistula. In examining fistulae, we should also look for epithelioid granulomas which could mean that this patient potentially may have inflammatory bowel disease, such as Crohn's disease, which predisposes to anal fistulae, or an infectious process, for example, TB or a fungal infection. Let's learn a bit more about fistula in anal. Fistula in anal is an epithelial lined tract between the anal canal, which is the internal opening, and the perianal skin, which is the external opening. Sometimes it can be more like a sinus, which is a blind ending tract, which ends in the perianal soft tissue. It is classified according to the relation to the internal and external anal sphincters. So for example, if it is above them, it is known as suprasphincteric and so on. Clinically, the patient may experience painful defecation, itching, some discharge which can be bloody or purulent, or sometimes even containing fecal material. And this is a gross specimen showing the cut section of a fistula tract. Grossly, the tissue may sometimes be received piecemeal, but we can sometimes orientate it better, and we can see that there is this tract that leads downwards into the deep tissue from the anal mucosa, and there may be some areas of whitish fibrosis, which can feel quite firm, or some areas of reddish hemorrhage in the wall of the tract. These gross pictures, as well as annotated microscopic pictures, can be found in our free online pathology resource, PathWeb. The registration link is in the video description. Microscopically, as mentioned, there is a tract that leads from the anal mucosa into the underlying soft tissue. This can be either blind ending or it can open into the perianal skin. And this tract is often lined by inflamed granulation tissue, as we saw earlier. And there is a variable amount of inflammation accompanying this, which can be acute or chronic or mixed acute and chronic, which is what we saw. And there can be some fibroblastic proliferation as well as fibrous scarring around this. As mentioned, there can sometimes also be abscess formation and histocytic reaction. And if granulomas are present, then fungal stains as well as Zeal-Nielsen stains should be done to look for microorganisms. Here is a higher magnification picture showing the opening of one of the ends of the tract and we can see here the granulation tissue which is composed of these very small delicate blood vessels and lots of surrounding edema and inflammatory infiltrates. Here lower down in the tract again we can see granulation tissue with 
lots of mixed inflammatory infiltrates. And on higher magnification and in a deeper area, we see lots and lots of neutrophils as well as many plasma cells. So there is both acute and chronic inflammation and vessels from granulation tissue. Hence, in summary, this is a fistula in anal, which is an epithelialized tract that leads from the anal mucosa into the underlying tissue and sometimes opens into the perianal skin. The tract can be lined by a stratified squamous epithelium, or sometimes it is just lined by heavily inflamed granulation tissue, as we see here with these small new blood vessels, lots of chronic inflammatory cells, and variable numbers of acute inflammatory cells, which we can see more readily in this case as we travel deeper into the fistula tract. And once again, if granulomas are present, there may be an association with Crohn's disease or underlying infections such as TB or fungal infection. Thank you.